Welcome to Isk Making for the Free Folk Season 1, Episode 3. In this episode I will talk about the ships I use to run these missions. So here is the Proteus I use to blitz the missions. This Proteus is a sniper drone Proteus with almost no tank. Before Tech 3 changes I used to use uh, improved cloaking device and 50mm macro warp drive Proteus uh, with again with a drone setup, which was a really similar ship to this one, but uh, the Tech 3 changes actually improved my setup for faction warfare, because now my produces are covered cloaky, and they align and warp even faster. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about why I use produces. Firstly, um, the sniper sniper drone ships are really popular in faction warfare because you can pick damage type and you barely get zero damage on yourself so you can go for a maximum damage setup and which means you don't need to go next to the NPCs and take damage in order to blitz the missions therefore you can use a maximum damage setup and blitz the missions really fast the reason I use Proteus is even before the changes and particularly after the changes is that this Proteus warps at uh, 12 AU per second. As you saw in the previous videos, a good portion of the time spent blitzing missions is just warping around. You warp in between the systems and also you warp to the missions and you warp to, uh, from the acceleration inside the mission. And for all these, you need warp speed. This is even more so the case if you only have just one Proteus and you need to cover the entire faction warfare space with just one produce. Additionally, your warp speed helps you evade any attackers if there is someone after you and they are taking the acceleration gate that you are taking or they are warping to the acceleration gate that you are warping to. The 4 seconds align time is also really nice to cut back your warp around time and do the missions even faster. So you see the targeting range is 150, the drone range is about 430, and I usually orbit the targets at 115, and in Minmatar I take zero damage. So the armor repairer here is pretty much for contingency and in case you get close to NPCs by mistake. My fit is really blingy, but you can go for normal DDAs and a normal micro warp drive and a cheaper ship if you want. Um, you will have slightly lower, uh, because of the CPU problems, you need to drop one of the drone link augmenters. So you will have slow, slightly lower drone range, but that's fine, it's still doable. It's just I rarely lose ships in faction warfare. Therefore, that's why I, my ship is really blinged. So the trick with the fits is that you need to fit your ship according to the E-war type of the NPCs that uh, your opposing faction are using. When you're on Minmotar missions, Omar NPCs you use tracking disruptors, which are absolutely zero effect on these producers because there is nothing that needs to track, right? And then Omar NPCs use guns, so you, it's easier to evade them compared to missiles. When you run Minmatar missions, sorry, when you run Omar missions against Minmatar, then the situation is similar. Minmatar will use target painters, and which is not going to be too much effect versus these ships, and they are not going to use uh, missiles. Therefore, it's also easy to run um, Omar missions as well. To run Galante missions against Kaldari, you need to fit your ships against gens and drone ships again shine against running uh, missions against uh, Kaldari because once you attack uh, a target even if you are jammed your drones will still, still keep attacking the target and DPSing it down and while running missions as Kaldari against Galente this time you're gonna need to fit against uh, sensor dampening so you need to fit um, targeting range scripts and both Kaldari and Galente use uh, missiles to some degree 
which is going to be a greater sustained DPS on your ship, even from the long range. So you might need to fit some tank and lose some of these DPS items, which is not ideal. I ran missions as uh, three of the factions, and I think there should be a Proteus fit against each of them. This one is particularly against uh, Amar, but you can, you guys can find out uh, your own fits if you're in another faction. And by the way, as a side note, this expanded probe launcher is just for funsies. For other ships uh, that you can use, I've seen Ishtars and Gilas being used, and I've seen Tech 3 Desis being used. I can safely say Proteus is the best ship for faction warfare mission running. Because even though ships like Ishtar will have slightly more DPS, they won't be nowhere near um, 11 AU per second warp speed and 4 second align time. So especially if you have one ship, Proteus is significantly different than any other ship. But this also means that you can come up with your own Gilda fit or Ishtar fit if you don't have Proteus skills, until you grow Proteus skills. Faction warfare fits can be googled and found uh, anywhere really. I've also seen them being done in, in bombers, especially before uh, CCP nerfed these missions by, uh, by adding um, webbing NPCs inside the missions. But it's still, I think, viable, especially as Amar versus Minmatar and Minmatar versus Amar. Actually, I made my first uh, billion in a bomber running faction warfare missions. So for mission pullers I use leopards and the logic here is again since you will warp so much and, and leopards have this whooping uh, 20, 20 AU per second warp speed they are the most optimal ship to, to get these missions until you get smart bombed. I've never been smart bombed but I've been also careful so you need to be careful about getting smart bombed and I'm going to talk about that later on. But if you use a normal shuttle, it means you're going to be warping at 5 AU per second, which is significantly different. I think you will lose maybe 5 to 10 minutes for each mission running session. And a final thing about these producers is that I have this um, mid-grade ascendancy set to complement the warp speed. So you, you won't reach 11 AU per second. Uh, without the SNS he said. The SNS he said itself is about 1 billion, maybe 1.2 or 3. Um, I think it's a worthy investment, especially if you run lots and lots of missions. So PyFi shows me the total for the ship as 1 billion and the total for the implants at 1.1 1, 1. 1 billion. So for this character in total, you need, two point, you need a 2.1 billion setup. And as for the Guardian ships, I told you I was using Griffins for ECCM, sorry, uh, ECM. So um, you can have like a Guardian, like a Griffin with uh, four ECMs in case you get tackled, you want to maximize your chances to go up. Or if you feel like adventurous, you can get a warp scram to this Griffin and try to kill, especially if someone warps into your mission in a frigate or something. You can uh, scrum with them, and if you are far away from their entry point, uh, from the acceleration gate, maybe it, it, often you are like 100 and 110 away from their landing spot inside the mission. So you can just tackle them and try to kill them with your drones and your griffin. But the only time I lost my pro one of my producers was that um, I tried to tackle this Lachesis and kill it, but it was an AT pilot, it was a good pilot, and it killed my Griffin and it actually tackled my, managed to tackle my um, Proteus and it, it killed my Proteus with some other ships. So you can either focus on PvE or maybe try to get some PvP, or maybe even this Guardian ship can be like a Tech 3 or, or like something like a Rapier or a Chasis or something. So um, you can actually tackle your targets and DPS them down. Um, there is nothing more satisfying than killing someone who comes inside your mission to kill your PvE ship. I think that's it for the fittings and the ships. Um, the logic is simple. You need a, a drone range, a long range drone ship. 
with um, with lots of DPS and just one small uh, repair here and an MWD and some way to survive in low sec, which in our case is a, it's a cover top clock, clocking device, but you can use also clock MWD trick in an Ishtar or in an PNI or something. Thanks for watching and you can click the card if you want to watch the next video.